Are you ready for the new this morning? 
for you to be able to receive unstoppable grace for service in this end time which I mean you must have an encounter with the Holy Spirit an encounter with God to survive around forever you encounter with the personality of the Holy Spirit You need an encounter with the personality of the Holy Spirit. Jesus had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. He turned the world upside down in three and a half years. Peter had an encounter with the personality of the Holy Spirit. Three thousand men gave their life to Christ outside children and women. Five thousand gave their life to Christ outside men and women. You cannot have a encounter with the person of the Holy Spirit and still be there to say. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the, is the top person in creation. He is the force behind creation. The Holy Spirit is the force behind creation. When God said, let there be light, it is the Holy Spirit that forces the light to come. When God said, let us create man in our image, after our light, let it the Holy Spirit that forces it. So the Holy Spirit is the force of God. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. You cannot have the Holy Spirit and be killed by an agent of darkness. You cannot have the person of the Holy Spirit in you and be sick in your body. You cannot have the Holy Spirit and die like a power. Can you say amen? amen. Jesus said to the Spirit of like God, I send you the comfort of the Holy Spirit that when He taught you, He will teach you all things. He repeats your body. He revitalizes your body. He invigorates your body. He revitalizes your soul and your spirit. You cannot have him and end up the way the enemy wants to end up. This morning, the Holy Spirit is coming upon somebody. He's coming on you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. And every form of sickness shall be destroyed. Every pain shall be destroyed. And every cause of pain in your family, in your life, is destroyed by the power of the Holy God this morning in the name. Hallelujah. Reverend, please come. Come sit over here. Praise God. God oh, bless you, Hallelujah. Please bring down down his wife. Please, someone watch us. Ella, please, Ella, Tony, and, your, and his wife, please bring her to the second seat. God bless you. And his wife, please. To the second one. Amen. And then God Be let it say. You can have a tender with God and die in sick bed. You can have a tender with God and end up as a HIV patient or cancer patient for this task. Jesus said, The spirit of bringing the flesh from this nothing, the world I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. This morning, that life of God is coming to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Gideon encountered God in the book of Judges, chapter 6, verse 12 to 14. He encountered God. He was living a fearful life, a defeated life. He was living in fear. He was, that there was no liberty in him. Everyone in his time was living in fear in Israel. Until he encountered divinity. Gideon encountered God in Judges chapter 6, verse 12 to 14. His life changed, his story changed, the story of his generation also changed. You can't have a cat of the Holy Spirit and still be running from place to place. You can't have a cat of the Holy Spirit and still be living beggarly. You can't have a cat of the Holy Spirit and, 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 and keep on spending money in medicine, in meditation. 
I was chatting the other day with someone in Bounty State, that was like some couple of days ago. When I thought that was 52 years, she never believed it. Meaning of 52 years, it don't look like it. Why? Because I have eternal life of God in me. Why? Because God lives in me. I have so ye. The very life of God. It operates inside of me. Praise God. This morning, that same life shall be released to you. That this morning, that same life shall be released to your bodies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Did you encounter God in, in, in judges in life change? His story change. His story of Israel change. Jacob encountered God. The Israel inside of him came out in Genesis chapter 32, verse 28. For him to marry Yakusam for seven years. After seven years, his father was said, No. Gave him the wrong wife. He said, This old woman, I wanted to get married to, and you have to serve for another for seven, maybe 14 years just to get married. All of the life of Jacob had been troubled, suffering, pain, struggles. But the encounter God, he encountered in person of the Holy Spirit. He said, well, And God asked him, What is your name? He said, My name is Jacob. He said, no, you are no longer Jacob. Your name is Israel. His story changed. His life changed. His testimony changed. This one, your testimony will change for better. Somebody's testimony will change for better. Somebody's testimony will change for better in the name of Jesus. The hand of God is coming upon you this morning. The hand of God is coming upon your family this morning. The hand of God is coming upon your business. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can you shout a big amen? Amen. How about Moses? Moses was in Egypt. He ran away, not knowing what he has. He was having his father in law in media. On the encounter of God. In Exodus chapter 3. Moses was with the rod for 40 years without impact in his life. 40 years with the rod without impact in his ministry. 40 years with the rod without impact in his family. 40 years with the rod without impact in his generation. On the encounter God in Exodus chapter 3. This was the same man that ran away from Pharaoh, God sent him back to Pharaoh with the wrong. That enemy that is pursuing you from today, you will pursue them in the name of Jesus. Those enemies that have said or vowed that you will not lift up your head today, God will touch them in the name of Jesus. Moses was running for his life on the encounter of God. God said, What is in our sins? God sent him to Pharaoh. But when he went to Pharaoh, he said, God said, Lord, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, ask him, who are you? Who have sent you? Of what kingdom have you come from? He said, the God of the Hebrews, the God of my father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob have sent me. And Pharaoh said, I don't know that God. I only know those, my, my witchcraft power and all the rest. And they display power. He called his magician, his occult men, and all the rest. And they dropped, and Moses dropped his rod. And they also dropped theirs. And the Bible said the rod of Moses swallowed up their rods. This morning, the power of God is going to swallow up every negative power. Operating your life, in your family, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Power of God is going to swallow up that sickness in your body. That negative medical reports, the power of God is going to swallow them all this way in the name of Jesus. Amen. Most times I tell people, I cannot die. I will not die young. I say it everywhere I go. I tell people every day, and Jesus tarries. I said, Jesus comes now. But if he tarries, I'm going to stop to one thing. They doubt me. Don't doubt me because I know who I am. I have eternal life. But God lives in me. He lives in my 
my body. He lives in my soul. He lives in my spirit. I can't be sick. I can't be diagnosed with high blood pressure. I cannot be diagnosed with cancer. I cannot be diagnosed with HIV. I cannot be diagnosed with high sugar diabetes. Because God lives in me. And that same God is going to manifest your body. That same God is going to manifest your bank account. That same God is going to manifest your family. That same God is going to manifest your business. We don't shout the big amen. Moses was in the world for 40 years in that empire of the intangible gods. We in Exodus chapter 3. The potential in him came up. Pharaoh bowed down to him. His magicians bowed down. All the gods of Egypt bowed down. This morning, your enemies shall bow down to you. All those that are gods that are using to, to torment others, they shall bow before you this morning. In the name Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It was not you are in God. I'm talking about unstoppable grace for service. Unstoppable grace to serve God. I went to preach in Anglican church sometime and I, I was talking so bold. And the people called me said, Pastor, you know, the way you talk, I'm, I'm afraid. You know, sometimes I was talking the way you used to talk and they tried me and nearly of a brand man. I said, anyone that wants to try, you should try. You know, there's a level you come in Christianity that even Satan himself bow to you. There's a level you come in Christianity when they take your name to, to, to stretch altars. Those altars we scatter. This morning, every satanic altar, we are your devil with your name. I dismantle those altars by the fire in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will succeed. I decree this morning you will succeed. Your children will succeed. Your husband will succeed. Your wife will succeed. In the name of Jesus Christ, I see international doors opening for your family. In the name of Jesus Christ, get ready. New day is done. It's about to be done in your life this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Beloved, Prophet Jeremiah knew himself as a child of the encounter God in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 to 10. He knew himself as a let's look at Jeremiah chapter 1 quickly. Jeremiah chapter 1, let's just read the Bible. 4 to 10. Praise God. If you are just shout, Amen. You are just shout, Amen. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. Let me read for the word of the Lord, the words of Jeremiah, the son of the God, of the priest, that we are in Anatos, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Joseph, son of Judah in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came to pass in the days of Joachim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, then the word, listen to me, said, then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Behold, before I found thee, before I found thee in the bed, I knew thee, and before thou comest forth, thou out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and ordained thee a prophet unto the nation, not just unto his family, not just unto his congregation, but unto the nation. The man never knew he was a prophet but it was just battling with family issues. It was battling with community issues. Not knowing that it was a global voice. I will tell you a prophet on the nation. Then look at what Jeremiah said. Then, then said I, ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak. I am a child. Jeremiah himself as a child, not knowing the potential that God had put in him. He knew himself as a never do well, as nobody had no connection, as someone had nobody to help him. But before God, he was a prophet to the nations. 
But to a man who was a nobody, this morning God is bringing something out of your life. Because I 
the defeated Iraq. Saddam said to about one million rats to fight America in the same in, 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 in operation. This has come. America went that he thought they would come to land on the D-Day. America displayed more than 500 aircraft. The back then they said that no Iraqi military had gone, no of them, they were full of there. America checked that men then. So they never lifted up their barriers. This morning, God is filling you with faith Amen. to overcome every battle of life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That sickness in your family lineage is destroyed this morning. Amen. That disease that refuses to, to lift your head is destroyed this morning. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Must understand that you are a heavenly representative. But then to speak on God's behalf. When you are a, a heavenly representative, you have been ordained to speak on God's behalf. God cannot do anything without you. So if God has sent you to speak and you are speaking in fear, God will not back your fear. People like God who have stepped into some dangerous areas, some dangerous places, and yet nothing happened. We are put down on us. We are set on fire and we are still in it. Praise God. While we are still waiting for those who are coming from that day, while we are still preaching, the greatest enemy to unstoppable grace or service, let us see what can stop you from not enjoying this grace that people like Gideon, Jacob, Moses, and Jeremiah, and the rest enjoy. The greatest enemies to some great for service is sin. Can somebody say sin? sin? You know, sin in our day has become a way of life. People don't want to see sin as sin. They see it as part of, you know, you know our daily living. But the Bible says, in fact, John chapter 5, verse 18, that all unrighteousness is sin. Why is it that doctrine, whether it's fornication, stealing, lying, backbiting, unforgiveness, or whatever, it is sin. All unrighteousness is sin. First John chapter 5, verse 18. Let's go to first John chapter 5, verse 18. Mark us to read from the Bible. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you are very John, very John chapter 2, all unrighteousness is sin. All. It is just some all. 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 All unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. All unrighteousness is sin. First John 5, verse 18. Say, we know that whatsoever is born of God sinneth not. Believe that is the begotten of God, keepeth himself. And that, and that wicked one, don't check him not. That wicked one, when you keep yourself from all righteousness, the wicked one cannot touch you. But why is that which is among as catching us on the day that we are warning? Look at what because we are living in sin. But when you are living a holy and righteous life, no wicked man can come out with your destiny. And you say, Amen. Amen. Whatever that is not right is wrong. Sin brings reproach. Sin erodes honor. Sin terminates dignity. Cut down and brings low. When you are living in sin, it brings reproach. It brings your real honor. Nobody will end up with you. They, they despise you. They talk down on you. That's what sin causes. It terminates dignity. It cuts down and brings low. It kills people early. Sin at its roots. Sin at the root of every evil. Because before sin came, there was no evil. Before sin came, there was no evil. So sin is the root of all evil. But they show, you see your child, you wrong, you won't correct them. 
say this is a, a work of art. That, that is new age. What is new age? Your child is threatening. It's your, your, your son is carrying trade love and you cannot stop him. Your daughter is wearing chain. He's late. He says that is a fashion of the day. That is the new work of life, new order of life. You are destroying that child. A couple of months ago, a, a family called me. When they called me, uh, and uh, they said, Pastor, please, can you come and uh, my, my son, my children, they rented a place. Can you come and place a place for them? And I said, oh, God, God, they, are, they are there for me. The family is so close to me. They are wearing from the very close. Praise God. So when I got to that place to play, even the parents of the children don't know where the children are staying. We have to call, call, and call. And when we go to the estate that they rented out, they cannot accept the place until they ask you to come in. When we got to the place, it was a very big house. Everything was okay. There were one, two friends. 18, 20, 21. Fleets of cars. See, that Asia was almost catching cold. Yes, they were not living good life. I ministered to them. I knew they went to Yahoo. I ministered to them and told them there's a way that cement right on the road at the end of it, the way that leads to destruction. Jesus is waiting to that life. I mean, after I listened to them, I blessed them and gave the offering I came back. As I was driving back, I, I was with their mom. Met their dad somewhere. You know, their dad was a retired controller of immigration. I met him, he was telling the pastor, I listened to them as yes. This, the man told me, said, Pastor, do you know for? More than three years, I'm not, or four years, I'm not laying eye for my children. I said, why? I don't even know, I and their mother doesn't know where they live. I said, what's the problem? He said, they will drag their head, I will cut their head. They will do this, I said, no. The boy I look, they pack, and they're living well. But I don't trust them. Imagine that the, the, the elder one is telling me that he's the manager of the younger one. The younger one said he's a musician. They are not singing any song. They are not missing any, no album. They are so wealthy. They are, they are more than eight or nine in that very house. All of them bad boys. I met one there. I said, where are you from? I'm from America. I said, do you know me? He said, no. I said, who's your father? He told me his father's name. They all over. Our children. Go ahead. All the righteous they see, but sometimes no right is wrong. See, brings reproach, a lost honor, that negativity, content, and brings low. Sin is at the root of every evil because before sin came, there was no evil. At the root of all disease, failure, and frustration is sin. And I was happy on the sin came. Man was happy on the sin came. Sin brings sickness. See, because of diseases, I told the other that I can't be sick with cancer, I can't be sick with heart disease, I can't be sick with blood disease, I can't be sick with no sickness that has my body. And you also, I profess that no sickness that has survived my your body. Yeah, In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, I pray for a lady in America, I think she might be watching right now live. I pray for a lady, she has not worked for 20 years. She was on sick bed, just on phone, she's not healed and she's working. And she's part of this ministry. She's part of throne of grace in Nigeria. She's the president of this over there in America. She has no what? Sin. And the Lord told her, your problem is from your foundation. Your mother was a witch. Your father lived the wrong life and everything was exposed by the Holy Spirit. And I conducted her deliverance from this altar. Life by this, on this altar. And she got the God job. His son was 21 years. He had never worked as a dog. He's working. He's working in a company. They are living healthy. They back down their ministry because this is a really blessing to them. Beloved, I want to let you know that God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for your family. God has a plan for your business, your career. God has a plan for your ministry. All you need to do is to amend your ways. It's never too late to amend your ways. Can you say amen? The Bible says in Ezekiel 18 20, the soul that sinned is shattered. The soul. That is, this 
so that's it. So what the root of sickness is sin. The root of disease is sin. The root of cancer is sin. The root of brain disease is sin. The root of, of heart disease is sin. The root of kidney, liver disease is sin. And sin is sin. It doesn't matter who committed it or where or how. All our parents will give me sin. Sin is sin. It's not only of it. It's sin is sin. Even though you're a bishop and you sin, you will see the same penalty, the same judgment. Sin is sin. It doesn't matter who committed it, where or how. All appearances of evil is sin. This is what we preach in front of grace. That's why we don't have much crowd. Sorry. Praise God. They were coming home, we are preaching, pampering them. Everyone was almost two services. And when the Lord has not gave us this mandate, they left. And we are still building the world. We can't be tired. Can you say amen? Amen. Ezekiel 18, 20, the soul that sinned is shall die. How can, you know, you know, Nigeria started suffering when sin came into this nation. I think that was 1979. Nigeria was wealthy. Nigeria, Americans were coming to work in Nigeria. Canadians were coming to teach in Canada and taught us in just like that. Indians come to teach. Italians were coming to Prevention for prostitution. For you to sleep with a white woman, you pay 20 naira. 20 naira. Naira. So funny. And today, our women are going to, to live in Togo, to be a republic for prostitution. Everybody wants to leave Nigeria. Why? Because of sin. Sin of corruption. From head to toe is corrupt. Why would Nigeria be better? Why would Nigeria be better when they are sin? And this thing started when they celebrated more than 1,000 gods. We the name Festa in Lagos. Invited more than 1,000 gods all over the world. And God became angry with them. Plus the sin of corruption and all the rest of it. Today everybody is suffering. You have 1 million, it's as if you have 10,000 men. The one does not look like 10,000. Yes, I was, I went to Swan, I spent 30,000 naira and I couldn't see one. I just walked out and uh, uh, go to more and one or two things. 30,000! I can't even give a count of 30,000. May the Lord show mercy to this nation. May the Lord show mercy to our families. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, it is God as sin and shall die. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is the eternal life through Jesus Christ. The wages of sin, the word is saying most of sin is death. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Sin kills joy, sin destroys finances, sin, sin destroys the anointing of God upon your life as a servant of God. Uh, it destroys the anointing, it destroys the grace, sin destroys homes, sin destroys nations, and sin destroys people's career. Destroy joy. A man is one, a married man, you sleep with the woman that got your wife, a man that got your husband, you have you don't have peace all of your life. You don't have peace. See, it is joy. Destroy finances. Destroy the anointing you carry. Destroy homes. Destroy nations. And destroy career. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 6, He that lives in worldly pleasure is dead while he yet liveth. He dead. When the one can be in walking cops, that's what the Bible says. You think you're alive, but you're not alive when you live in sin. No, exactly what happened to Adam began on Eden. God said, Do not eat the that food. And the devil came and spoke to them. He said, Just eat. If you eat it, you will not die. You only have the knowledge of God. Your mind will open. Deep things will reveal to you. And they ate the thing, the fruits, and they died spiritually. The devil deceived them. That's exactly what is happening today. The seed of Lucifer. Lucifer has deceived many. They have all Adam, they have deceived many. And lives in working pleasure is dead while he yet living. That is a walking cause. All oh, dead man walking. Dead man, that's just 
to work in any minute the person can just enter it. That's what it means. That's what God said. When you live in sin, you live in this world, you pleasure in sin, you are dead that you're walking. Any minute, any second. People will be crying, hey, hey, you need to repent. Let us repent. Let us amend our ways. So we can live a better life here on earth and also a better place in heaven because hell is real and heaven is real. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 15 says that the sting of death is sin. The sting of death is sin. Once sin comes, the next thing is death. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's see why many are indulged in sin or engaged in sin without knowing they are living in sin or why they have been deceived by the devil and they are doing what they are doing without knowing that it's a day to pray for all they have been doing. Sin is in three dimensions. Sin is in three dimensions. And that is the area of where the devil has deceived men. It's in three dimensions. Sin is a third dimension number one, it is deceptive. It is deceptive. The devil will not tell the end of everything. You only tell you come out, not jump at somebody, they, 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 somebody died in your family, and somebody went somewhere, they ask you to bring one around and one goat that they will help you out. They won't tell the end of it. Just like what happened in my own family some years ago when we lost our elder brother. They will tell me the end of the whole thing. They will just come and will protect you. At the end, the children, children start paying for what they don't know. They will tell the end of it. That's what the devil does. It is deceptive. I went for a deliverance in Nashville State. A, a lady, her husband was a commissioner, a, a retired commissioner of police, but they were living in uncompleted building. The man was wealthy, his children wealthy, his wife didn't know how she got into witchcraft. How did she enter witchcraft? She didn't even know that when the man was even up to that time, they still come with security to come and carry the man for his pension. In the time commission, his children were doing well, his son was wealthy, staying in jobs. Then we are living in Jordan, they were from Beirut State, so he, he bought a place in Nassau. He built a mansion in Beirut that did not enter that place. Grass covered the place. And they see different persons have come to conduct deliverance and, 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 and did it still happen. One of, one of the daughters had kidney problem, kidney problem. And they called me. And I said, Can I speak with her on phone? As I was talking with the young lady, she had never met before, I've never seen her. And Praise God. And I told her, your problem is witchcraft. Someone has eaten up your kidney. Then the Lord is going to heal you. Just pray with that on phone, the kidney problem disappeared. On the day I went to a national level, the prophet she saw me that I was a young pastor. Her depression of the man was in HIV, not even S, not even HIV, S, no longer HIV, down in the hospital bed. When we go there, I asked Madam, Madam, lose your children. I said, Madam, lose your children. She said, How do I lose them? I said, Lose them, they're not catching them. Praise God. And our children said, Once she come for the to that family and enter her, when once she enter her bedroom and come out, you change your mind. Mother, you are not dead on the level of how I came with. She walked into her bedroom and came out. I said, Madam, that one is, you are learning what? Lose your children. And that was how for the first time the truth and God to know how their mother went to the witchcraft. He said, Pastor, if you was on fire, I will confess. It was when my husband was the commissioner. He impregnated one woman. And when he impregnated the woman, they asked, uh, you know, women can carry women to other women, other wrong places. Then I, I, I was angry, I don't want the boy to come into the family. So one of my friends took me to the place, uh, one shrine in Berlin. And that shrine, you don't see it. You only go to the place and make vow. When you make the vow and come back, what did it happen? You bring goats. I said, that all. And I took said, Pastor, do you know that my, my that, that was the person said, do you know that one enemy, my mother came naked, front and back, 
and cost him without any problem. If one of my daughter in law are married here, you are married here, stay there in America. If when you want to be pregnant, what she will know. And what she will say, how you dare pregnancy will be terminated. People want to marry her, her beautiful children, want to come for nothing. They will, they will run for them. Pretty children, all of them are married after that deliverance. She confessed and confessed and said, and that actually, when she went and met the bar, that the son, the, 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 uh, her husband and uh, uh, son, the one in front, as I disappeared in that day. Nobody knew it. In and out. But nobody knew what to do the boy. He disappeared in death. But what happened that she had not gone to fulfill the bar, to give the money, the God to whatsoever. And she became a witch. So she now destroyed the family. See? This one, I break the power of sin in your family. I break the power of sin in your life in the name of Jesus. See, it's in three dimensions, it is deceptive. Let's see him quickly. I want us to read from the Bible. Hebrew chapter 3, verse 13. Sin is deceptive. Sin is deceptive.
The way to hell is broad. The way to heaven is narrow. And Jesus told me if you are found in it. And someone will tell me, Pastor, uh, we think has uh, uh, how many million and billion members and deeper life and all the rest of the church. That God is expect of nobody. Go to church or don't make you a candidate of heaven. Many are in church today, but they are not in touch with God. Including pastors, including bishops, and we tell you that. I was talking with a man sometimes, the man was a, 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 a senior restitution, a, 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 a master of masters and restitution. And, and I was talking with him, he said, Pastor, I don't really have knowledge. I said, it's by the grace of God. And that there's one thing he asked me, he said, Pastor, how can God destroy, he said, China is about how many billion? About seven, how many billion? About four or five billion. How can God destroy our child? But God God. I told him, I said, God is the result of nobody. In the days of Noah, how many people were left? Noah and his family, eight people. Out of the whole world, eight people were saved. In the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, in the days of uh, Lord, he said, Lord, his, uh, his, uh, his two daughters. This is why we didn't look back and, and talk the blood of Sodom. For so God is the result of nobody. If the trumpet sound now, and we are not ready, hence the persons. Eternal apple, but that shall not be you in the name of Jesus. So imagine Moses accepted to be the next king and end up in hell. He refused. He suffered affliction, he suffered pain, he suffered ridicules and all of things, but at the end, he was a celebrated man. Number two, the next number two dimension of sin, sin is destructive. Sin is destructive. See that destroy any men of purpose. See that destroy any men of potential in other time. See that destroy any marriages. See that destroy many ministries. See that destroy many nations. Even Americans are watching me this morning. They know what I'm talking about. America is sinking on daily basis. Nigeria is finished. If God don't intervene. The sin of Nigeria is just corruption. From the head. Praise God. And look at Nigeria. We are wealthy, but no job. People are dying. See the destructive. Let's see Proverbs 11 3 quickly. Proverbs 11 2. It is destructive. Proverbs 11, verse 3. Proverbs 11, 3 says, The integrity of the upright, the integrity of the upright, shall guide them. Shall guide them. That the perverseness of the transgressors shall destroy them. The perverse want to pervert things. They want to do things when you are not your name for you. If it is for you. To destroy you. Let's see first Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. First Corinthians 3 verse 17. Praise God. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. The Bible is Paul said in first Corinthians 3 17. He said, if any man defy the temple of God. If any man, this is a song. It didn't say he did not believe any man, whether you're a bishop, you're an apostle, you're a prophet, prophetess, deacon, deaconess, minister, member. If any man defy the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. So the many of us are shouting fire. We are fighting. Battles that we don't know that there is no devil in here fighting us. It's just our sin. This is the thing we want you to understand. If you are living a holy life, no amount of God can kill you. No devil God who can kill you. No spirit can touch you. Praise God. Because the devil is one of the afraid of holy people. So the devil wants to destroy a holy man. All he does is to lure you into sin. Try to destroy you. He came to sin. When Israel came out of Egypt, they were strong. No nation could tear them. They destroyed nations, destroyed kings. 
and he came to a place and Baba, Baba called Baba the prophet, a soothsayer, said, Can you please curse Israel? The same thing has happened to some of us. No one has taken our name or knowing to some strange altars, to some shrine, to cause us or cause our children or husbands that we die. And when the man wanted to curse Israel, the Lord spoke, he said, I cannot cause whom God has blessed. He raised another altar, I cannot cause whom God has blessed. He raised another one, I cannot cause whom God has blessed. Seven altars. And what happened? At the end, Baba couldn't cause the anointing of God. Baba couldn't tear the anointing of the of God. So what did Baba and fight Baba? He told them, he said, These people, their God is in them. Their God is in their midst. You cannot bring them down. You cannot defeat them in any battle. You cannot tear them until you defy them. So all they are going to do now, in order for their God to fight them, not believe you because you cannot fight them. But the touch not my anointed and do my prophet on. So you can't fight them. So all they are going to do, mobilize your young girls, send them to the camp of Israel so that their men will defy your girls. Once you do that, their God will kill them and come. And Balak is that all said, they mobilize the Indian young girls, they went into the camp of Israel and the men of Israel captured them, raped them, slept with them, and God was angry with them. Sin is a reproach, the killer. Sin is a destroyer. Sin is a killer that destroys men, nations, families, companies, and all the rest of it. It shall not destroy you in the name of Jesus. Beloved, if you want to enjoy unstoppable grace, you want to succeed and enjoy greatness in life, you want to enjoy eternal life, you are here and make up at last, you must not despise the word of God you are hearing this morning. What your head is reading. One day, you will give account of what life you have lived. One day, Apostle, what will you give account of his life? You will give account of your life. I will give account of my life. So you don't bring shame to your parents. So you don't bring shame to your generation. So you don't bring shame to the kingdom of God. Don't despise it so that you can prosper and enjoy the good of the land. There is a good in Nigeria. There is no food that people are eating. There is no money that people are buying land and building mansions. Is that for us? You are going to be part of them in the name of Jesus. You shall be part of them in the name of Jesus. Can you open to Isaiah chapter 1? Isaiah chapter 1. Verse 18. To 20. Praise God. Isaiah chapter 1, you are watching online. This morning, the grace of God shall be released upon you in the name of Jesus. The grace of God shall be released upon your family, upon your career ministry in the name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. The prophet said, in Isaiah chapter 1, from verse 18, say, Come now. And let us reason together. God is with the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though your, they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. He said, If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the food of the land. If you are willing, so life is a choice. You want to succeed in the choice. You want to fail by the choice. You want to make heaven the choice. You want to end up in hell in the choice. Alone that makes the choice. See, they are willing that you shall eat from the land. Verse 20. But if you refuse and repent, then I will sin against God. Ye shall be deformed with the sword. But the man of the Lord has spoken it. Not the man of the apostle, but the man of the Lord. Praise God. That you shall hallelujah. Hallelujah. They are willing and obedient. You shall eat the good of the land. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. 
Beloved, sin is nobody's friend. It is a dangerous enemy. It's not your friend. And it calls sin. You know, when I talk about sin, some people think that the only thing we sin is when you sleep with one wife or commit a murder. No, even telling lies, even unforgiveness, bitterness, sin. Sin is nobody's friend. The devil's enemy is up to security to disappoint people's destinies. Stop that sin. Stop that sin. Don't matter how many it is. Stop that sin. The world is stop sin. Kill that sin. You are playing with the world to kill. Imagine something. Samson was a strong man, the greatest of his time. He was toiling with his body, the devil of God. Sin of adultery was what destroyed Samson. The great man. Just like somebody, a soldier, playing draft in the battlefront. That's what happened to strangle the kill the person. An infantry, a combatant, we are combatants, we are fighting against, we are not fighting against the other, we are against the civilian from the battlefront. So we are playing draft in the battlefront. Strangle the strike will bring you down. And we shall be brought down in the name of Jesus. Amen. If there's any struggle that has hit you, Unknowingly, I declare the you in the name of Jesus. Sin is sin. Doesn't matter who commits it. Where or how. Sin doesn't require much definition. What is not right is wrong. What is not right is wrong. What is not right is wrong because the Bible says that all unrighteousness is sin. Whatever the Bible marks wrong is sin. Sin is never a friend than an enemy. Sin doesn't lead, it destroys. Sin does not promote, it demotes. Demotes. In Ezekiel 28, verse 15, that's what is happening to many people today. Say, Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day thou was created. The what? Iniquity was found in thee. Is that your Bible? Praise God. Of the sin he found, he was perfect. He was a perfect creation. He was a beautiful creation of God. On the sea they found in him. Praise God. Below, I'm running up the power and about to understand that sin is a reproach unto any people. Sin is a reproach unto any people, not some people. Any. Can you say any? Doesn't matter who we are. Any, whether white, black, or brown. Sin is a reproach unto any people. The Bible says in, in, in Proverbs 14 34, righteousness is not a nation, but sin is a reproach unto any people. Now let us examine ourselves so that we don't fall into the devastating gospel of sin. No unstoppable grace, no honor or glory. I waste a good person, I waste a wicked person. Because Proverbs 28 verse 13 was that he that covereth his sin shall not prosper. When you cover your sin, you won't prosper. If you pray, catch fire, by fire, by fire, fire, enemy, that nothing will happen. Because you are covering your sin. He that covers his sin shall not prosper. So when you confess your sins and say, Lord, have mercy upon me, forgive me for my sins, he forgives you. 
that he that covereth his sin, in Proverbs 11, 13, he said, he that covereth his sin shall not prosper. He shall not prosper. Beloved, sin payday is short. The earlier you resign from sin, the better for you. The earlier you resign from sin, the better for you. Why? Because hell is free. Heaven is free. Give your life to God. Time for you to give your life to Jesus. Give your life to Him because hell is real and heaven is real. There's a great day for everything we do in life. There's a day to receive our reward for every good or bad thing we do. But life is a choice. The choice you make today will determine where you end. Jesus is calling you. Jesus, please, the family should come to the front, please. Come to the front. Seat. Jesus is calling you. Make your ways. Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. It is the will of God to give us rest. It is the will of God to give you peace. It is the will of God for to live a dignified life, to live an honored life. It is the will of God for to live a healthy life. It is the will of God for to live long. I prophesy to you this morning, you shall not die young. The enemy shall not abort your life young. In the name of Jesus, if there is any altar in your father's house crying for blood, I shall let those altar by fire. You will succeed. I decree you will succeed. You will live long. In the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you this morning. In Jesus' name. Can you show the living amen? Amen. You are blessed this morning. Stand your feet and wave your hands and appreciate God. Give him praise. Don't give God praise this morning. Thank you for all you have done. Thank you. Father, we appreciate your grace. Thank you, faithful God. Thank you, covenant living God. Thank you, our Father, oh my God. Thank you, you begin at the end. I give you praise this morning. Thank you for the word of heart. Thank you for your grace you have released upon me. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercies that I knew every morning. Thank you because great is your faithfulness. Thank you, King of Glory. Holy Braka Pazigidish. Rimala Bayande Brota Baha. Libeketo Zanta. Brata Broto Balita. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? amen. Say Holy God. Holy God. Let your righteousness be established among us. Among our families. Let your righteousness be established upon the life of your mother. Begin to pray. And Lord, establish your righteousness upon me. Let your righteousness be established upon me this morning. Let your righteousness be established upon me, upon my house. Upon your, upon your people of God. Great Paruta, Lebo Sakutanaba, Enkatos, Beria Tanata, Ekoto Sata, Ekli Daratuda, Zude Kaparute, Entalabrato, Empuliata, Eketu Sata, Reke Balata. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Establish your righteousness among us. Establish your righteousness upon us. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Can you shout amen? Amen. Say, oh Lord, oh Lord, let your revival fire burn in our lives. Walk again in our midst, oh God. Okay, my hand, Lord, let your revival fire begin to burn in our life. Your revival fire, I need your revival fire. Let your revival fire burn in my heart, in my life. Open your mouth, Lord, your revival fire. We need your revival fire this morning. Your revival fire, Rabu Satan. You can uproot, you can destroy. Now you're going to pray. Say, Oh God, uproot every satanic stronghold. Uproot every satanic stronghold. Operating against my life, against my family. Open my to pray, begin to pray, Lord, uproot every satanic stronghold. Operating in your life, operating in your family. I Lord, uproot them by fire. Shaka Maya, Rotaka Pratokapa, Leto Sataka. Every satanic stronghold, there is a 
uprooted by fire. Every cattle, every shelter is stronghold of in my life. Oh God, every shelter is stronghold of in my family, of in my life. I come to this morning. I destroy them by fire. Shut up. In the name of Jesus, I put down all the networks of wickedness in my land, in my family, every satanic networking against my health, against my finances, against my children, against my wife, against my husband, against my business. So, oh God, I put them down by fire. You to put them down right now. Every satanic networking against your health, against your finances, against your life. upon me this morning. So as I step into the month of August, I will walk in health. I will live in I will live in abundance. I will live in grace. Open my little prophesy. Declare. Ring power of bush. As we live July to August, go where you think. Let pass such a life. We give you all the glory and praise. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, I prophesy that you empower your church of people with grace this morning. In the name of Jesus. Father, release all the grace and potentials and down for our life this morning. In the name of Jesus. I ask God to release all the hidden grace and potential buried by the enemy in your life. I command to release in the name. I decree you shall not die. Then live to declare the words of God. I prophesy the release of grace, fresh grace, and power upon you this morning to prevail over every forces of the enemies in the name of Jesus. I dismantle every roadblock against your greatness in the name of Jesus. You are blessed. You are lifted. You are blessed. You are lifted. In Jesus' name. Can you shout a living amen? Amen. Put your hands to the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. You have heard the word of God this morning. The word of God is life. Jesus said, The word has become to you in our spirit and your life. You want to give your life to Jesus this morning? You want to dedicate your life? You, you, want to, you gave your life sometime that you backslidden. Please lift your hand wherever you are. You want to give your life to Jesus? You want to surrender? I surrender.
right now, we are going to give our tithes and the offering. Just raise your offering up. And also, if you have your tithe, you can also raise it all together. As you raise it up, you are approaching the Almighty with your substance. You just raise it up and close your eyes. God Almighty, I begin to bless it. Tell the Lord to come to your aid. You should accept your offering. You should accept your tithe. And the Lord will listen to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we thank you because you are mighty. We give you glory. You have spoken this morning through your servant. Lord, we are blessed. Father, there is no other word we need to hear today that is far away, no different from the one we have. You have ordained this world to reprove us, to strengthen us, to shape us, and so that every negative and bad thing that has made up our life will be dropped through the fire of the word of God. Father, at this point in time, we have come to appreciate you, to say thank you. Thank you for all that you have done, for all the blessings, that though we walk through the valley and the shadow of them, but we did not fear the powers of darkness. You kept us alive. You healed us. And now you have also blessed us with the heavenly food. Your word that heals and keeps man alive. We say thank you. Accept our thanks, O oh Lord. Accept our offering, O oh Lord. That, O oh Lord, as we give on to you, all our problem is given up. No weapon come against us shall ever prosper. And any man that shall rise in judgment against us is condemned. Every missing bullet shall not find their way upon our life. Father, we shall leave, O oh Lord, to see the end of the month of August. Thank you, Father, O oh Lord, as you have sent our tithes and offering today. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let the church say, Amen. Oh, yeah, give them song. Oh, my man, I regulate my Oh, my man, I love you.
us come. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. Let the offering the time be sanctified and be acceptable in your sight in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless and prosper every hand that has given in Jesus' name. Amen. And those that are wanting to give, God bless them and give them something to give bless we gather in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you try to begin and put your hands together for Jesus? Amen. 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 Praise God. Um, take your seat quickly. Take your seats. I will have a Thanksgiving service this morning. Um, Mr. Samuel Wobidi, Clinton Wobidi and family has come to thank God for their, with their mom who has mourned my brother, my elder brother Benjamin who just passed on February. Praise God. And she has finished the morning and want to appreciate God. Because most people in the period of morning they die. And traditionally, you know, those who believe that say it is a bad person than the others. But God has done it. Praise God. Amen. And I want to decree that this shall be the last of time in my family. Amen. <laughs> my grandmother lived for 103 years. My father lived 86. So nobody will die to my child that family anymore. Amen. The name Jesus Christ. Amen. God will take his place. Amen. God will set his throne in that family. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Our sister Doris and Mr. Samuel and siblings. Please I want us all to join her coming to thank God. Praise God. Have your own song or should give you song. Have your own song.
by the Almighty God that created heaven and earth. He that made me to see today. I'm here to return all the glory to his name. It's not by my own power. For the power of the Almighty God is too much. I know he will keep on protecting my family. I know he will show me the right way to pass. No evil. No evil. And I repeat today, and I say no evil shall come to my family again. I thank God for indeed I know that he will never forsake me. The tears of joy is about to come to my family. Yeah. And I have already cleared because nobody can disappoint that from my way. And nobody can remove that from my way again. Man. Because the Lord said, whatever you ask, shall surely come to pass. I am calling upon my Almighty God for him to please protect my children for me. To protect everything I have, Jehovah, he is the only one that can give me strength now. I do not believe in anybody. And I will keep on praising Almighty God. I will worship him in the morning, I will worship him in the afternoon, I will worship him at night. Because he is the only one I know. And he will keep on guiding my family for me. Because he is the only one that knows what I do. Before anything happens in the way, and I know you will keep on protecting my family for me. Please, I beg all of you that came to glorify the mighty, almighty God for me. For you people to cry and call upon his name. For him, for him to guide my family. Tell him, let me use his form letter to cover my family for me. You people could you help me and tell Almighty Father? For I in love with the Lord. I said today a love is the Lord. Let him come and glory. Let him come and give. Me. I don't know what to say again. Because the dream I had happened last night, I don't know what to say again. But I said Almighty God should take control of my home. Let him take control of my home. Let him take control of my home. I know he will do this in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Affliction will never rise for the second time. Amen. Please stand on your feet wherever you are. We're going to pray for the family. That is the word of God the Lord gave to the family. Say, when the house of Egypt, the house of Jacob, from a people of strange language. What are strange language? Untimely death, sickness, disease, kidney, liver, high sugar, diabetes. This and those are strange language. My family is coming out of it today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your family is coming out of it today in the name of Jesus. Amen. I didn't prepare this one. I want to go to Psalm 100 and the Lord gave me this psalm. It made like Columbia for the family. He said, Judah was his sanctuary and Israel his dominion. The sea saw it and fled. Judah was driven back from today. Every enemy of your family shall be driven back in the name of Jesus. Amen. They shall flee away in the name of Jesus. Amen. He said, the, listen, he said, the mountains keep like rats and little hills like lambs. What else did oh, thou see? That thou fledest, thou Jordan, that thou were driven back, ye mountains, that ye skip like rats and ye little hills like lambs. Trample thou it at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, which turned the rock into standing water. And flint into a mount a, a, into a water in the name of Jesus. Church, I begin to prophesy over this family. Begin to prophesy that no evil shall before them anymore. And they have come to testify. Please, the family should kneel down. The immediate family should kneel down. Immediate family should kneel down before God. We are bringing you before the altar of God. Please, the immediate family just kneel down. We are bringing before the altar of God. Stretch your hand, prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. And the same God has steps their nephew, they has kept their uncle, the same God has called me to be the God and kept me alive, kept me strong, we keep us strong. Man never shut up. Renever catch on the kete. Shesh! Shelever baba la gada da da da. Repire nerebaka. Shenerebaka. Reprota. Be 
Bino Tapa, Roto Barete Ketos, Bindoba, Bindoba, Barata, Hekete Prato Sekete, Enka Barata, Endolo Bolobos. Reverend, please go. Reverend, please come to the altar so we will eyes that we a professor by the family. We have the same family. Male Prata Bababash. Reverend, please. Reverend, Dr. Ari, in the place, Professor Wallace. In the name of Jesus. In, in the second book of Samuel, chapter 24, a similar thing like this happened that was too grievous. The Bible says over 70,000 men died in the land of Israel. And therefore, it came to pass that King David went and bought items, yes. silver, gold, important materials, and brought them to the temple of Jehovah for a sacrifice. He moved to the hand of God to stop that plague, to stop death, to stop affliction, to stop destruction. And they asked Jehovah the Almighty, who never despises his people, when he received that sacrifice, that plague was stopped automatically. And therefore, Jehovah the Eshadai, the Almighty that never failed, the I am that I am, the road of Sharon.
and of nature as a prophet in the house, I decree every plague in my father's house, in my brother's house, to cease in the name of Jesus. Yeah. From today, there will be no more untimely deaths. From today, no more that's not in the hospital bed. In the name of Jesus. Agreement yeah. with the church. Come back with the blood of Jesus. Come back with the blood of Jesus. Come back with the blood of Jesus. And the church has shout a seven big amen. Want to go? Amen. 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 So the family head right now is the one who headed the place come to the altar is my nephew. His, son, his father was a prophet that never fulfilled his, his ministry, and you fulfill your ministry. Amen. He's also a prophet. Praise God. He's led by Samuel. I'm going to hand over a mountain to him in the Bible. Praise God. Amen. And no power can stop him Amen. as he's carrying this Bible. Amen. Nigeria. Can you say amen? 
I'm going to give you a new Bible also. Can you put your hand together for Jesus? You will succeed. You will succeed. 
you will succeed. Go and shine. For your light has come. And the glory of the Lord will rise upon you. You are blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. May the grace. The Lord of God. The Spirit of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now forevermore. Surely. All the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever and ever. And may God bless you in Jesus' name. And the faith of God shall upon you. Go and excel. Go and succeed. In Jesus' name. Thank you.